Come to the exam question walkthrough here for a practical skills question. So this one's about enthalpy changes and it's a bit awkward. So as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to process all of this information here to calculate the enthalpy change for reaction 3.2. So from the mass readings, the mass of sodium oxide is obviously going to be the difference between those two readings. So that comes out at 1.24 grams. The mass of the solution is the difference between those two readings. So that's 25.75 grams. And the temperature change is obviously the difference between the two temperature readings, and that comes out at 35 degrees C. So we're going to feed that into the Kutel's MC delta T equation which comes out at 3.767 kilojoules. Remember the answer will come out in joules first, divide by 1,000, puts it into kilojoules. The moles of sodium oxide that's been reacted is the mass over the MR, so 0.02 for that. So the delta H, the kilojoules over the moles, 188 kilojoules per mole, but remember it needs a minus sign because the solution got hotter, so it's exothermic. So now we've got to calculate the enthalpy change for reaction 3.1. So I'm just saying delta H question mark. So we've just calculated 3.2 was that minus 188. These are obviously kilojoules per mole. And we were given 3.3 is minus 57.6. Now, in my opinion, the easiest way to get to the answer from here is to use simultaneous equations rather than try and draw a cycle. So what do I mean by that? So basically, we're going to make the equation that we want to know the enthalpy change for out of the equations that we know the enthalpy changes for. So if we have a look at the reaction that we want to calculate the enthalpy change for, 3.1, we need a mole of sodium oxide. Well, there's a mole of sodium oxide in 3.2. It's on the correct side of the arrow, and it's in the correct amount. So we're just going to take the enthalpy change for 3.2. We also need two moles of HCl. Well, there's one mole of HCl. It's on the correct side of the equation, it's on the left-hand side, but there's only one mole there. So we're going to add to 3.2, two times the value for 3.3. So before I work out the answer, I just want to show you how this works. So I'm going to take all the reactants, remember to double these ones, I'm going to add them together, and I'm going to do the same with the products. So when you do that, you get this equation here, which we can simplify. So the two moles of NaOH cancel, and that water on the left cancels, and that just goes down to one mole of water. So look at what we're left with. Na2O plus 2HCl, Na2O plus 2HCl, gives 2NaCl and H2O. 2NaCl and H2O. So we've created the equation that we want to know the enthalpy change for. So if we do that, the enthalpy changes, we'll get the answer for the unknown one. So the three significant figures, that's coming out at minus 303 kilojoules per mole. Part B now, so a couple of percentage uncertainty calculations to do. So we've got to work out basically the percentage uncertainty in this uh, mass measurement and in the temperature change measurement. Now the thing to remember is both of these were based on two readings. So there was an initial mass and a final mass. There was an initial temperature and a final temperature. So the errors or the uncertainties need to be doubled. So for both of these, we take the uncertainty value, divide by the measured value, double in this case because two readings for mass, two readings for temperature change, and then times them by 100 puts it into a percentage. So you can see that the mass has the greater percentage uncertainty at 0.81%. And then finally, a modification using the same apparatus that would reduce the percentage error in the measurements. So obviously we can't use a more accurate balance because that wouldn't be the same apparatus. So a good way to reduce your percentage error is to use more stuff. So I would just say use a greater mass of sodium oxide. And I would just back that up by saying that this lowers the percentage uncertainty in the mass measurement. Alternatively, you could say weigh the sodium oxide directly in the cup. And because of that, you're only doing one mass reading. So your percentage uncertainty would half because you're not going to have to do that times two.